I often get this question. It's a great question, actually. Can you go from acrylic nails to gel or gel to acrylic? It can be confusing. I have Laura as my model today. Hi. We are going to do nail renovation to explain that. We're going to go from this to these beauties. We're going to create those beauties today. Let's get started. So if you remember, Laura was my model in the nail renovation video where she brought her phone in to show me some pictures of what she would like. Well, she's been busy shopping on the internet. These are beautiful foil fall leaves she has found. It's not a sponsored video, by the way, but I just want to show you how these beauties are going to sit in and why I've chosen the products that I've chosen to accentuate its beauty. Those are gorgeous, Laura. I'm glad you found those. First, we have to get rid of the old stuff in order to build for the new stuff. Now, because of those particular leaves and the shine that they have, they're sort of like changing colors, hence they call them chameleon leaves, which is very appropriate. But I want to use a super, super, super duper see-through product. Acrylic can be quite see-through, but I find gel to be the most see-through. It's just so beautiful. So she has acrylic nails. If you remember what we did last time, we did the acrylic nails. I think we did the see-through acrylic on these to get this somewhat acrylic see-through look. This was acrylic that was clear. We're going to file down all the top stuff off, and then we're going to file right down to the clear acrylic. And how thin do we go? Well, it's pretty, pretty thin. So we got a lot of work ahead of us, so let's get started right away in getting rid of all of this product. Get me glasses. <laughs> They're important. They're important. To see, yep, to see. Now, obviously, the first goal is to bring up any pocket or any lift whatsoever or any discolorization. The better you get at this, the less of those problems you'll be encountered with every time you do a removal or before you do a fill. Now, in this one here, because it's her index finger, and I believe that is her right hand, you're right-handed, you're going to see a little more wear and tear on a client's right hand. So I have a little tiny cuticle lift there. Very common in a person who works in an office, which you do. Mm -hmm. And these are quite long. So that's nice that we don't have too much going on here. Just a little tiny lift. So I will file that right down. So my goal here is, see this arch that we've got in here? I need to have the leaves inside there. So it must come off. If you are a nail technician, or you're going to a nail technician to have this done, if they don't take it off and they just put the stuff on top, you're ending up with thicker and thicker nails. So as a nail tech, you want to maintain that shape. So you have to file out the nail. I liken it to if you're going on to try a, a big jacket on, you got to take your jacket off that you're already wearing before you put another jacket on. You don't want to wear them both. So take off the previous nail. And because we're putting the inlay in there, the leaves that is, we want most of the gel to be on top and build the thickness and create the strength for the nail. The leaves will just be inside as the beautiful picture. So this has got to come down quite flat. Now, in all fairness, there's two ways to do this. You could just shorten this right off and start right from scratch and form everyone or tip whatever you're using. Or we can file down to this and keep the shape that's already there. See how I'm filing away the arch? I'm filing away the actual shape of the nail. I want to get rid of all of that shape and thickness as much as possible. Now, if you're not into filing all this off, you could soak this off if this is a soak off gel. You could do that. Well, this is acrylic. You can just soak it right off. Just buff it and soak it. It takes some time to do that. But if you're not into filing it all off, if you're not great with the file, you could definitely do that.
to finalize this one nail off and then I'm gonna take them all off. But just to finish this up for you so you know what you're doing when you're filing. You get a good file. I've got my file set and I'm gonna pull up my fine, medium and coarse. Now I'm gonna determine the shape right now. Laura loves coffin and we did them coffin last time but we did them more of a square coffin. It wasn't a super, but she's expressed that she'd like to have them much more coffiny. That's how I describe it. <laughs> More coffiny. <laughs> there you go. That's a technical term that we use. So I do the shaping of that now before I start to build. Because there's no point of adding all my leaves on a shape that I'm still going to refine smaller. Because then I'm going to end up taking away stuff. And I don't want to do that because I want to not cut into my design. So I'm going to actually make these more coffiny. And how I do that is I'm taking away the side. I'm just tapering it in. I'm making the end here much more tiny. Now it's at this point that I will check with the client and make sure that this is the amount of coffiny they want. So check that out, Laura. Is that what you're looking for? I like that. That's that pretty good. good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it can be a little uh, weaker because we've tapered it. But she's pretty good with her nails. Laura's pretty good with handling what she does in her day. But she really, really craves that kind of look right now. And I love it. I think it's gorgeous. So I am going to change my bit and focus on some cuticle work here. I'm going to use this bit to get into the finer details. But take a look at this. See this? See that lift that's happening there? Now, you don't want that, of course. It's ugly. We got a little bit of, um, you know, little discolorization under there. Oh, look at that. It's just flaking right off. This is when the point you want to get it. You want to get it so it's gone. It's most likely not going to happen on the other fingers because this is the busiest finger. Can you ever have too long of a nail where you would suggest to the client that they don't go as long? That's such a great question, Laura. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes clients will come in and they have a really tiny nail bed and they want a really, really long nail. It's an uncomfortable situation with a client because you want to give them what they want but you know there's a very good probability they're probably going to break that. And unfortunately, they're probably most likely going to look at you as to why they broke that. And because they don't do this for a living, it's hard for them to really understand the balance, the teeter-totter effect. So here's the best way I can describe if you're a nail technician, or even if you're a client, you want to understand why your nail technician might be giving you that kind of, yeah. we call it the third, the third, and the third. Do you remember? <laughs> So what we do is from the cuticle to the free edge, the free edge is when the nail is not attached to your finger nail bed anymore, okay? Nail plate. So from here to here, you can see where Laura starts to begin. She's got a little natural nail under there and it's grown, but we're just talking the pink part before it starts to separate from the natural nail. And then, of course, we have the fake nail, which is extended from here. So you take the whole nail from here to that pink part, you cut it in half, and that distance from here, you got one-third, one-third, and one-third. So two-thirds of it is on her finger, and the one-third is just hanging off. That is the ideal for a new set length. I wouldn't go longer than that. But then you might have a client that comes in and they want it really long. Now, if they're sporting long nails like this and they've come to you from another place and they want it, well, yeah, what, what, give it to them. <laughs> right. They're obviously handling it. But if they come in with a really, like Grant, if he came in in his really short little nail bed and he says he wants them really long like this, I'd be like, eh, you know, is it just for the weekend? You want to just kind of get crazy for the weekend? That's fine. But for long-term mobility, they're better to put a shorter nail third, third, and third and let it grow up to a length like this. Oh, okay. But honestly, if I was walking into a nail technician and I wanted the long nail because I am have an event and I want it to look great, I probably wouldn't care either what they said. I want them long. But it's not a not a great idea. I mean, you've worked up to this. You never had them like this out of the gate. No. Great question. We got a little sidetracked, but bear with me. We'll get right back on it. Okay, so I am just filing away now. So I am just going to make sure that I take away any of this lifted area. And you can see there's a little bit of lifted and discolorization here. You just want to make sure you get all that up. So now we are just going to continue flattening that nail out as much as possible so we can build all the structure in and casing those beautiful leaves. You can see 
a slight arch here. I'm going to take that out. Okay, that's getting to be a good example of where we're heading to. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up the other four. Then we can get to the build. So the build section of this video is also the decor, the decoration part of it, because we're combining the two, because we're doing an inlay. I'm just going to dump some of these Camille. Oh. <laughs> A little too much. There. You're going to use all of those? Yes. Okay. We're going to load these bad boys up. So what I've done is prepared this so thin. I'm talking so thin. If she was to get up and, you know, go into the car, she'd probably break them all off. They are very, very thin. And I also made them as flat as I possibly can. She's got a curve to her nail, so I'm making them as flat as I can. The reason being, these little guys are flat. The build will be in the top gel that goes over top to sculpt over top of That's my strength and that's where the build is. So I try to make this as flat as possible. The flatter this is, the, the canvas you might say, the easier these will stick in there. Okay, so <laughs> it's almost like, where do we start? <laughs> I'm gonna lay in some color in underneath to give it a bit of a backdrop. Okay, so I'm going to bring in some of this beautiful sparkle red. And I'm not going to put it everywhere. I'm just trying to pick up the fall colors, you know? This is quite stunning. It's a beautiful color. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can really see that, but that is gorgeous. So I'm just going to sort of pepper it through here. And I also love this color. It's very fall. Oh. It's just stunning. I think it's one of my favorite time of the year. Mm -hmm. We are just driving around the other day and noticing some of the trees are so, the leaves are so red. And then some are so gold and just love it. Beautiful colors. So there's no real rhyme or reason for my placement here. I have an idea of where I'm going to place the, the um, leaves. But I'm going to bring the color right down to the side because the leaves are flat and her natural nail curves. So sometimes it doesn't reach the sides as well. So we're gonna make sure we have some glitter on the sides to pick up that kind of light that dances across the nail. So, see what I'm doing there? I'm just gonna bring some of this beautiful gold, really dense in there. But I don't wanna make it thick because I don't wanna lose my coffin shape. I know, it's kind of fighting all these elements, trying to keep this. Oh my, that is, you know what? I'm gonna bring a little bit of red. Get a little jiggy. That's okay. <laughs> that a little bit of gel get rid of that for two reasons overexposure to gel like that on the skin can over time cause contact dermatitis and I say over time because that's a general rule some people will get it the first time they do it and that's really a shame if that happens and you also want to take it off because you don't want to cure it in there so now this is already sticky if we cure this these little guys won't stick as good so now we're going to go right from there to picking up some of these amazing leaves and just Oh, are they adorable? They're so cute. Now, when you were looking online, mm -hmm. Laura found these online. She was just surfing away and she showed them to me and said, these would look great on my nails. So that's when we decided to do a video. But you said there was other shapes too? Yeah, they had stars, Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a bunch of different. You go to town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just change the background color and you can have a totally different theme. Yeah. And they weren't expensive. Like I said in the beginning, this isn't a sponsored video, but we still want to tell you about what's, you know, that's what I'm here to do. So this is from Cocoon Creations, and you bought it from Etsy. Mm -hmm. Chameleon leaves, they're called. Very cool. Hey, Susie, Sorry. do you get clients bringing in products that they want? Not very often. In nails? No, but 
Sometimes they'll bring a special color if it's for a wedding or a special event prom. Mm -hmm. They'll bring in a special color nail polish. Yep. Or sometimes the dress or a piece of it. But pieces of product, more and more because it's easier to get online, but not as a general rule. But I'm telling you, not every nail technician is going to have everything that every nail technician has around the world. So if you have something specific like this, bring it in. This wasn't cost a lot, too. I think it was yeah. like $3 or something. You can get different size bags. So oh, okay. the less you get, the cheaper, of course, Did it we is. buy a big one? That's the biggest package, okay. yeah. And we did that. Laura consulted with me, and I said, get a big one, because then I can take it to the shop, because they're so cool. I knew we'd like it. Yeah. What do you think of that? That's so pretty. That's And beautiful. so fall. <laughs> and so fall. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, I'm going to stick one over here, too. I will tell you guys... These are so thin mm -hmm. that you can actually layer them on top of each other. So like mm -hmm. if you've got like Christmas ones or Halloween, if you want to get a little crazy mm -hmm. jiggy, as I say, you can layer certain things over top. Yep. Like mm -hmm. bats, if a bunch of bats are flying. Mm -hmm. or, that'd be really cool. You could These do are different, great. Sorry, what was that? Cut you could off. do different shapes too. Like if for Halloween, like you were saying, you could put a bat and a pumpkin in together or yeah. a ghost or something. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love it. Okay. So I'm going to have fun now, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to decorate all of these. This is the build and the decorate, honestly, section of this video. gel that I'm building with is meant to sculpt with and it's a very thick viscosity. We weren't going to mention it originally, we were just going to build, but now we're looking at it and going, it's very different than any other gel that I've really worked with. And it's really great, I think, if you got the mindset of an acrylic artist because it doesn't move very much, which acrylic doesn't move so much. You have a very limited amount of time. But I kind of like this because of its thick viscosity means it's going to stay in place while I build the whole set. Then I can nuke it at the end. Sometimes when I'm working with other viscosities, which I like as well, I will nuke in between because I don't want it to run too much. I want it to run a little. So I guess what I'm trying to say is viscosity really is a personal thing. And you got to find out what's good for you. I'm actually quite liking this. As you can see, I'm quite clumsy at it. I'm not really that very good at it. But I'm getting better now, even just with this third nail. It's beautifully clear really going to show off what's underneath. Yeah, it really will. And I can see this one is running a little bit, but it's really in all the good places. Should you flash cure that? To hold well, it? I was letting it run is what I was trying to do. And I thought I had, I mean, it's a learning curve. I'm trying to learn how much time I have to build how many nails before I have to give it a bit of a flash cure. You can always add more. So it's self-leveling. It's self-leveling, but very slow. And that's what a thicker viscosity, this is education in here. Sorry about that if it's too much, but it's a thicker viscosity. Great question though. So it moves a little bit slower, but once it gets there, you want to nuke it, but it gives you more time to build out some nails. And again, because I'm not expert at gel, I'm not bad, but I'm not expert at, and every viscosity has a different flow and I'm learning that. I've never worked with one so thick before, but I actually quite like it. Of course, you're trying to make it as perfect as you can, but there's going to be some filing we need to do. So let's nuke that, Laura. On all the different angles we've got here, cameraman was noticing, he's seeing, what color were you seeing on there? Different oh, angles of the camera? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from the side camera, though, yeah. where I am, they look pretty much green with a little bit of yellow, depending on the angle. I'll right. show you here, but primarily green. Right. And right. your angle, you said you're seeing some blues and reds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I see the golds and reds. Yeah. One angle the summer. Right. And then the other angle, they oh, look good like fall. point. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I guess it's, you're at it's turning. They're turning. Okay. Look how beautiful those are. They're oh, so pretty. Good nail technician. No bubbles. That would be embarrassing. Man, that's shiny. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. 
It's gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to form the other two because those were solid colors last time. Remember the last mm -hmm. video? We didn't take those off completely. Mm -hmm. um, but this one I'm going to because we wanted a bit more of a see-through look. So I'm going to form those up, finish these up, and then we're going to get to the filing and the shaping. Yeah. So just removing that sticky dispersion layer. Gel cures about 90% in the proper lamp. If you don't have the proper lamp, it's not going to get that good. And the rest of the time it will cure out in the sun. But you want it to cure to about 90%. That's a properly cured gel. But it still has a little dispersion layer that you just wipe off before you start to file. And if you forget, then you'll figure that out once you start to grab your fan file or, or electric file because it'll gum that right up. So back to my great professional files. I just released these professional files in this acrylic brush and file kit. So if you're interested in pro files and a pro brush, that's what these are. So I've got my coarse, medium, and fine. And I'm going to use my coarse to shape these. One great thing about gel. I love gel because it's so shiny and so clear. But I also love it because it hand files quite easy. It's a bit of a softer product to work with. So these beauties, man, they're going to be gorgeous. I'm really loving them. Okay, so um, because I did have my shape pretty much, as far as that coffin shape, I'm going to now sculpt these up. I'm just going to sculpt these up and go around the cuticle ever so gently. And all I'm doing, basically the best way I can sum up filing is, there's highs and lows. There's a nail in there. It's there. We know it's there. I know it's there. <laughs> I'm going to file all the way the high points to meet the low points. And once those meet each other, we get a nice buff. If you find that the there's holes, that means your low points are too low. If you don't come down enough, that means you're still too thick and the high points are too high. So on that note, we are going to file and file and file all my high points to meet those low points. And that's what makes a beautiful shaped nail. As long as all the product's there, it's in there. We just got to sculpt it out of there. I noticed some nail techs that when they're filing, they'll hold on to the base of your nail, like nail the cuticle, is that just oh, to make yeah. it more comfortable for Yeah, me? because if I'm filing, good question, Laura. If I'm filing, can you feel that? Mm -hmm. it kind of feels icky. Mm -hmm. If I hold it like this, it's doesn't that feel good? Yeah. It feels much more solid. Mm -hmm. So hold it, when you're doing the free edge, really hold that nail, especially if it's long. If it's short, it doesn't matter. But if it's long, definitely hold it and do it like that. You're really securing it in there. Do you really feel that wiggle back and yes. forth? Yes, it feels awful if it's not stable. Can you file these up with an e-file as well? Yes, absolutely. It's not necessary to hand file? No, you don't have to. You can file it whatever way you want. You can do it with acrylic too. You just want to make sure you have good files. When you don't have uh, good files, <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> It'll be there for you. Yeah, yeah, honestly. You've got to have a good set of files. Okay, I perfected that one. Now I'm gonna go on and do the rest. Okay, I've dusted it all off and now I am just gonna wipe off a little bit of the excess dust. And now we're gonna see it come to life with a beautiful top coat. Oh my goodness. Oh. Comes to life. It never gets old. I've been doing this for 33 years now and it just never gets old. Look at that. It's so pretty. Isn't that cool?
You know, as much as I love that glitter under there, it looks really pretty just against the natural nail. No, no glitter at all. Mm -hmm. That's also really pretty. It is. I'm just noticing before. Do you see that kind of? Do you see that happening there? Can the camera pick that up? I do see. Do you it's see almost, that kind of iridescent moving and oh, almost yeah, right. I bet you Christine from Simply Neological will love this leaf stuff. And you know she doesn't do acrylic, but you could put this in nail polish with the top coat. It's such a thin. The leaves I'm talking about, they're so thin. You could just place them right on top of your nail polish. And then top coat it right in. Gorgeous. Cool. Let me just check the cuticle. Make sure nobody ran. Nope. Perfect. Nope. Oh, good catch. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to oil the cuticles. Reveal time. Let's look at the reveal shots. I did do the other hand the other day. So we've got two hands in the reveal shots. Check it out. Look at the colors in there that they just, they keep, I'm seeing orange in there. I never saw orange before. There's a lot of different colors in there. Wow, they're so pretty. Oh, it's spectacular, really. They're I beautiful. I love them. You like them, Laura? I think they're one of my most favorite I know, sets. I'm thinking the same. Yeah. Okay, so pricing, how would you price something like this? So I think this is about a hundred dollar set. Some places are $50 for a new set. Depends on where you live. We're Canadian dollars here, but it depends on where you live. But I would charge about $100 for the new set. And because the client actually brought the product in, of course, I'm not going to charge them for the product because she brought it in. And as far as laying it in, you are just laying it in. It's not that much of an effort. So again, I'm really wishy-washy when I'm too nice, obviously. Sometimes I just get a little bit. And I just would maybe place them in there for free because she did bring them in too. But if I had them, then I might charge an extra 5 or $10 just for placing them in, right? So there'll be a hundred dollars if it's for the new set, five or ten dollars, let's say hundred and ten dollars for the added additional product that you're putting in. And then the gel polish I don't include because it's clear and I just would just coat it on top. So I don't charge for that. But if I charge for the removal, you're talking another thirty dollars for the removal. So you're looking at maybe a hundred and forty dollars for a set. Okay. Some people might find that rather expensive. And we are in Canada. And depending where you are, on the more expensive side, we live on an island, things tend to be more pricey. But mm -hmm. honestly, even if I was in the middle of the country in, you know, not as expensive, high living, I would still charge a lot because I still have to get these products to me and I still have to train to become this good at it. So I honestly still would keep my caliber of cost up there. <laughs> they are pretty though. I love them. They're very pretty. Yeah. Beautiful. And we didn't mention in the last video, and we had so many comments. I have to, gimme, 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 <laughs> gimme, gimme. Yes. One person actually commented and said, can we just take a second and talk about the ring? <laughs> Which I thought was really a cute comment. You just got engaged. I did. And I've known Laura a long time. And her fiance now doesn't know me very long, but he did call me up and say, Hey, would you take some pictures for us? Sneakling. So I'm lurking around in the bush with my daughter. We got a couple of cameras. <laughs> we took pictures of the actual proposal, which was a lot of fun. It was so sweet. <laughs> it was very, he's very sweet. Okay, so beautiful ring goes with a beautiful set of nails. That's great. I just love doing these. It was just so much fun. Thank you for joining us again for my nail renovation, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.